Come on, get a get a Congo man some. He did it. Come on, you know when you're feeling something, you know you just like, well, I, I ain't just quite ready to let that go. Come on, he did it. Is anybody here can testify that the Lord did it for you suddenly? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you that you did it suddenly when the world was in darkness. Father, you sent your only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now, Lord, I pray that you give me what to say and just how to say it. And then, Lord, I pray that they that are here have an ear to hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. And when it's done and it's over and it's complete, I promise you, I give you all the praise, all the credit, all the glory, and all the honor. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We thank you, God. Come on, somebody shout one more time, glory! Come on, raise the roof. Come on, shout glory! Come on, a little louder. Come on, shout glory! Come on, shout a little louder, glory! Come on, throw your hand back. Give God the best hallelujah. Hey, come on, hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Somebody get something in your mind that you can thank him for. Come on, somebody just give God a thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. What he did, what he did, what he did, hallelujah. And when you didn't think it was going to happen, and then suddenly, hallelujah, you just thought it was going to keep going on, but it changed. The Lord changed that thing. He reversed it. He, oh, my God, hallelujah. Yeah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together and give God some more praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We give all praise, all credit, all glory, all honor to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Honor each and every one of you that are here today. I honor my own lovely companion today and honor my mother-in-law today, Mother Wade. And thank the Lord today for Evangelist Kersey here over visiting with us on today. Thank the Lord for her. Let's thank God for everyone here today, all the ministers and all the elders and deacons and choir members and musicians and ushers and audio and the visual. And thank the Lord for our visitors today. So many other places it was already stated you could have went and worshiped today, but I'm just going to say the Lord had you directed for here today. Amen. Now, that's not going to change even when I start preaching. You're supposed to be here today. Amen. Even when you think I messed up because the subject that we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk to you today about the hour of temptation. The hour of temptation. You know, this message really would not be appreciated as much as it will be appreciated in the future. While I'm ministering this message today, it may not grab you with a, a gratitude and appreciation, but down the road here when he cracks that sky and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we that remain shall be called up to meet him in the air. But if 
you don't make it through the hour of temptation, then you are going to dread that day. So right now, my assignment is not for you to feel good about the message, but to try to help you get ready for that day. My assignment is not to be a popular preacher and, and to have people to love me. My assignment is to warn you what hour we're living in and, and, and try to persuade someone to absolutely trust God uh, even at this hour. Now, when it says the hour of temptation, that means it's going to come a time when temptation is going to be greater. Temptation has always been in the world, but the scripture talks about there's going to be an hour. There's going to be a set time when temptation is going to be greater. Uh, the, the, the imps and the demons and the, the seducing spirits and all of these forces of evil are going to be released with even greater influence to tempt you. And the purpose of tempting you is to get you to forfeit your golden city. See, Jesus went away to prepare a place for us. And he said, where I am, you shall be also. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would not have told you. And Thomas said, well, how do we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that no man comes unto the, unto the father but by me. So what's happening in this time is that the devil wants to convince folks that uh, you can go ahead and sin now and be okay later. He wants you to go ahead and, and not yield to God now, but to go ahead and, and enjoy whatever it is you want to enjoy right now. And so he is coming at people in such a way that it almost seems that right is wrong in this hour. <laughs> And wrong is right. See, right now, you, you're getting criticized if you really try to be a preacher that preach against sin. You're really not popular in this hour to be a preacher that absolutely uh, dissects the word in such a way that nobody will leave here today without knowing exactly where you stand. And so we're in that time of temptation where it's everywhere. I mean, it's everywhere and as if to say that it's all right now. 30 years ago, you never would have heard of same-sex marriages. 30 years ago, there wouldn't have been such a thing even talked about. And not too many years before that, would you have ever even heard of folks talking about uh, living with somebody outside of marriage. Y'all say, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but we, we, you know, we're in the new millennium. No, you're in the hour of temptation. You're in a time now that it's, it's very unpopular to preach against homosexuality and, and to preach against fornication and adultery. We, we're living in a time where it's everywhere. And people are living as if there is no day of reckoning. And so my assignment again is always God's giving me a burden for souls. I'm not here to impress anyone today I'm here trying my very best as the spirit uses me to possibly uh, minister in such a way that somebody will have the scales taken off their eyes do you know there are spiritual scales that you cannot see do you know there's spiritual glaucoma uh huh. There's spiritual cataracts. There's, there's stuff that's blocking your, your vision. And do you know the only thing that can cause you to see clearly really where we at is the word of God. And if you reject the word of God, then you're not going to be able to see what time you're living in. Now this is the truth, y'all. There is a, 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 okay, it's a frog. And you put a frog in the water. And you turn the temperature up little by little, the frog would never, ever jump out of the water. He will never jump out, even though now the water is boiling. Because he was not able to detect that you had turned the water up and you can boil him alive. 
He'll never jump out of the water because he wasn't able to discern that you increase the temperature. Satan is real slick because he's steady making us think, well, this is all right. And now this is all right. And now the government say it's all right for two men to marry and two women to marry. It's, it's all right. You, you know, uh, you don't have to worry about getting no ring on it. Everybody's shacking. It ain't no problem. It's all right. You know, you don't have to be ashamed of getting pregnant out of wedlock. I mean, you know, don't, don't, don't judge nobody. Leave people alone. Just, you know, don't be criticizing folks. But I want y'all to know that the Bible clearly speaks clearly about sin. And even if we don't like to call it sin, that's what it is. Even if we're afraid of offending people, and even folks in this room might be offended today, but the, the Apostle Paul says, if I offend you and it causes you to repent, I don't take it back. I don't care if you get hot mad with me today because of this message, but you're going to really appreciate me if he cracked the sky and you made your change unto righteousness Oh, it ain't no, no, it ain't no good feeling today because none of us in here that are saved are having a good time with our flesh. I'm going to preach it because, see, what's wrong is church folks want to have the flesh and they want to have God. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah, that's what's wrong. We, we, we want to be in the church and we want to still be able to have our flesh satisfied. You got to make up in your mind that you're going to put your flesh in check until he cracked that sky. <laughs> so I'm tired of all these old weak preachers telling you you can have it both ways because the devil is a liar the hour of temptation it's everywhere you can't get away from it anywhere you go the devil is tempting folks with a sin and it's not like you are you know uh, uh, praise God um uh, uh, hid or, or you, you know it's a way it's everywhere you can't go to work you, you can't okay you can't go to church <laughs> you can't turn your TV on you can't turn your computer on you can't go nowhere everywhere you go the devil is positioning himself to try to get you to give up your soul salvation so we're in the hour of temptation and this message is not popular this morning but this message is needed and necessary that somebody might not die and go to hell. We looked at a, 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 a movie or a, a play uh, last Sunday night and there was one woman uh, in hell that said, I only had one man. She was saying, I only fornicated with one man. Why am I in hell? Because the Bible didn't say you had to have, uh, uh, you, had, you didn't have to be a whore to go to hell. He said you had to be a fornicator to go to hell. Uh-oh. Mm -mm. And the preacher was in hell. And the preacher was in hell because the preacher had seduced the folks in his church. The preacher had lied and schemed and he was the preacher. So he was a false prophet and he was in hell. And there were some young people in the play that were in hell. They, they were part of gang banging and, and drug dealing, and they were in hell. <laughs> they tied a man that was a homosexual to a woman that was a lesbian, and they tied them together, and they were both in hell, and they couldn't get away from each other. <laughs> Again, I already understand this is not no, I like this message. But if Jesus come and you repent before he comes, you'll like this message. And if you're here today and you don't want to go to hell, you like this message. Is there anybody want to see the golden city? Is there anybody want to walk on the golden streets? Is anybody want to go to a place where there is no more dying? How many want to go to a place where there's no more Whitney Houston funerals? The whole country, the whole world crying all weekend. Broken, heart broken because of this untimely death. 
this brilliant person, this intelligent woman, this voice of an angel had not yet the ability to be able to resist the temptations of this world. Come on. You can be brilliant and you can be real intelligent and you can sing real good and preach real good and look real good and you can still be a victim of temptation. You better come on here this morning. I don't want to keep uh, living my eternity where there's wailing and gnashing and crying and screaming and no ever get out. So it's, it's better that you hear this little few minutes of preaching against temptation than for you to ignore it and spend forever in hell. Because the point of the message is try to get somebody to wake up this morning who might be under a seducing spirit. That might right now be under the spirit of deception that convinces you that the Lord is going to give you more time to get your act together when the Bible never told you ever to put your faith in tomorrow. Whitney was preparing to go to the Grammy party. She had just called pastor, uh, what is her name? Kim Burrell and said, girl, get over here. I need you. And within an hour, she was dead. The Bible said death comes like a thief in the night. When you least expect it, out of nowhere, death comes. You know why we hurt so much for Whitney? It's because it was untimely, which means she didn't get to live out all her time. We go to the casket of a 90, 95 year old and we can be hurting and, but we can still say she sure had a good life. Hey! Thank God he blessed her all down through the years. It's when we get to these young funerals that we be like Lord God Almighty. Woo! The power of temptation. Everybody in here is being tempted with something. I don't want anybody to feel bad like everybody looking at you. That's just your own conviction. But everybody in here is then got tempted with something. Everybody in here. This is why I don't like to play church. Because too many folks in church act like they ain't tempted no more. <laughs> oh, we're going to read about you, hear about you, and see about you. <laughs> Because you won't admit to it that the devil's at your house too. And your flesh is still barking too. Uh-huh, yo, 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 your flesh ain't never got saved. I don't care how much you got uh, uh, joined the church and got water baptized and speak in tongues and flip around in the floor and join the choir and say you're a preacher. Your flesh ain't never got saved. Your flesh still want what it want and it want it all the time. Your flesh, I guarantee you, this morning did not want to go to church. I don't care how much you love God. Your flesh this morning said, I don't want to go. You had to make your flesh go. Your flesh ain't never wanted to pray. You got to make your flesh bow down and pray. Your flesh ain't never wanted to fast. Fast? Oh, no. You say, don't eat for a few hours. Your flesh say, you killing us. You're not even diabetic. And your flesh say, I need this little something sweet. I feel diabetic. <laughs> Just give me a little something. I feel, I feel like I'm getting a little weak. Like You know you ain't even no diabetic. And your flesh trying to get you to buy into being a diabetic just so you can get a Twinkie. Well, Why? Just because the flesh don't never, don't never want to obey God. So after you get saved, you now in the war for the rest of your life. And if you sit in church and pretend like you're not in a war, the devil will destroy you. And I'm tired of going to church where folks pretend like they got it together. Y'all quiet now. I'm talking about New Life Church of Faith. I ain't talking about all them other churches. Get your mind right back in here. Get it right back in here. We got marriage class every Wednesday night, and most couples don't go to marriage class because they would rather get divorced than to come to marriage class and have somebody help them. You're quiet now. You'd rather be publicly shamed than to come and talk to a bunch of other folks who's in the same mess you're in. 
married couples all dealing with the same thing. That's why we need to come together and try to strategize on how we can keep our marriages instead of sitting back like, oh, I ain't got no problem, but this is a, a divorce without a reconciliation or a irreconcilable. Uh, somebody cheated. Uh. You're quiet now, married folks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, temptation is, is coming down everybody's street. Mm -hmm. and, and the church is the place you're supposed to come and ask for help. You, I don't like them old self-righteous folk got nerve to try to minister to everybody else but don't minister about their own shortcomings. Come to the marriage class, you'll see Sister Miller get me. Come to the marriage class, you'll see me get Sister Miller. And some weeks we say one to the other, I ain't going tonight. And we say, oh, we got to go because we the teachers. Because we don't want to have to get busted out because we know when we go, it always bring up stuff on us. Too many preachers is playing like they got a perfect life and they just like everybody else. They dealing with temptation. How to treat your wife, how to treat your family, how to pay your bills. You get a paycheck like everybody else. Will you pay your bills or will you play crazy? And everybody in town know you're a crook Christian. You sitting up in the kumbaya services. No, man, they'll come right in the church and, and jack your car and pull it away from church. How sad would that be to get your car repossessed from church? I don't know some of y'all be sweating while I'm preaching because you see a tow truck roll through here like that. What, what is they want on the church parking lot? That ain't even right. No, you ought to get saved enough to pay your bills. Quit running around trying to keep up with the Joneses all the time. Here she come with another dress. You can't get one for six months. Get on that sackcloth and ashes and get on your face. I believe on purpose God don't want some of us in a position of prosperity because we ain't broken yet. We're too busy competing and, or instead of serving. Mm -hmm. Time there's something going on in the church, you find a reason why to sabotage it. Because you ain't the one yet because you haven't been delivered from a proud spirit. You a copycat spirit. You ever think somebody else, I'm going to do that too. No, you need to get to the point that you can celebrate somebody else's gift. Celebrate somebody else's anointing. Celebrate somebody else's calling. Hey Amen. I know that wasn't going to, again, you don't like this message. I don't care if you don't like it. If the devil come today and, and, and you find yourself able to defend yourself against him, you appreciate this message. Because how many know he's coming? We're in the hour of temptation. Look at this number, uh, bro, Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And what? And his righteousness, I like, the, I like the eulogy that Marvin Winans did yesterday. Why? Because he right down past the street. And, and Pastor Winans was trying to be politically correct because his subject was priority. And he didn't want to hurt Whitney's family and the folks there, so he just skeeted around talking about, you need to choose the kingdom first. Who was he talking to? Because, see, you can get fame and you can get fortune, but if you don't get Jesus first, you can lose it all. What will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? I don't care. I don't mean no disrespect to Bobby Brown, but uh, Whitney never should have married Bobby. You already got issues and you marry somebody with issues? Duh. You like to get high? I like to get high. Let's get high. No, you need to marry somebody who got their, my God, their mind set on righteousness. Amen. I don't know how true it is, but somebody else that was interested in her that was more uh, conservative that she didn't really want that one. Those young ladies, young, woo, young men, because some of these bad girls around here jam you up too. How many know the devil's slick? Come on, somebody said we're in the hour of temptation. And they're convincing young people that the more crazy he or she is, that's the one you should want. Get that one right there. He bad boy? Yeah, he been to jail 17 times. Get him. 
Who is that one right there? She always cuts and scalds her men. Get her right there. Get, Get her. Our temptation is now where everything's wrong, they try to present it like it's right. I seen one of those uh, male, uh, female, female weddings on the news the other day. And this is how slick the devil is. Do you know that the woman that was marrying the woman, one of the women had a man's tuxedo on with a crew cut? And you looking from a distance, you think that's a man and a woman getting married. If two women want to be married, why one got to look like a man? If y'all two women, why one of y'all got to play like you're a man? If you two men and y'all both say y'all like men, why one of y'all got to have makeup on? I listen, 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 listen. Don't call me, don't write me. I'm just saying that's your call, but I'm just telling you, according to the word of God, it is unacceptable to God. We're living in this last hour where they now use preachers to justify that demon in the church. They right now using preachers with collars on saying, well, everybody should have the right to pick and choose as they so. Well, yeah, that's right. If there wasn't a God. <laughs> if you didn't have to answer to God one day, you could go ahead and do whatever you want to. But what if there's a place called hell? What if after you do your little stuff, you got to stand before a God who said, I told you, don't do it. But when you got this 2012 preaching some pulpits, they're telling their congregation, it's all right. It's all right. But that's why we're living in the hour of temptation. Because they're presenting it every day like it's cool. 60s and the 70s, you wouldn't dare put a tat on your body. Unless you want to be known as a, a motorcycle rider and, 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 and an inmate. They were, they were shunned. Them people were shunned. They put any kind of piercings on them and tats on them. In the 60s and the 70s, you were the outcast group. 2012, you in there, buddy. Look at Lil Wayne, Lil Worm. I mean Lil Wayne, Lil Worm, Lil Wayne. Which one is it? The Worm or the Wayne? Look like a worm to me. Scared me and I ain't nowhere near him. Just look at him on TV. <laughs> look like snakes on his head and uh. The world chasing him. Y'all quiet now. We're in the hour of temptation. You better, better ask God to take scales off your eyes. You better ask God to not make you mad because some of y'all don't like to come to this ministry anymore because you already know I'm always going to be talking against sin. You don't want no preacher talking against sin. Then you need to not go to church. Don't go to a church and play like you're going to heaven and go to hell. Come to this church so you can find out you are going to hell. <laughs> That's sober. That sobers you up. You mean to tell me I can't fornicate? No. What can I do? Get married. You mean I got homosexual or lesbian tendencies but I can't go with it? No. You're going to have to make your flesh behave. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I ain't going to tell you that that desire you got ain't your desire, but I'm going to tell you God said don't do it. Don't do it. Bottom line, you can't do it. The women had women of wisdom on Friday. My wife told me they had a lesson on order. God is a God of order. You do whatever you want to do. Not just because I want to do it. I go in the in-house suspension room at the high school and I ask the students, why are you in in-house? Well, I wouldn't turn my phone off. I cussed my teacher out. I wouldn't go to class on time. I wouldn't, disturb, I wouldn't serve my detention. Which one of those things that you violated was right to violate? So you are in house suspension because you broke the rule. God is a God of order. Anybody get a job, you don't show up when you want to. You show up when them folks tell you to show up. It's amazing to me. Oh, I'm getting ready to go somewhere. Oh, my God. How can you take orders from your boss, but you can't take none from your husband? Ooh, that, look how quiet it got. I know some women is in here. I know there's some women in here. Look, look, look how quiet it is. No, no, your, your boss tell you, no, 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 we're we going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Then your husband said, no, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. I ain't done. 
Don't get mad at me. Our temptation means you don't want to do what the order of God is. Whatever that is, like it or not. Okay, I know some of y'all ain't going to preach with me until I say, and the man is to submit to his wife also. Uh -huh, look, it got louder then. It got loud. Yes! Yes! It's a gangster type of mindset in this last hour. We want a gangster everybody else, but we don't want a gangster our own lives. Uh-oh, y'all quiet. Yeah, he got rules for all of us, men and women, husbands and wives. Am I right? He got rules for preachers and deacons. Come on here. He got rules for folks say they name the name of Jesus. Those folks have now ceased from sin. Okay, I like, oh, if there's any way, man, I could zap us all to hell for just a minute. See which ones would be pleading the case. Lord, you know, you know. I was just getting ready to get married. I was just getting ready to stop smoking that weed. I was just getting ready. To... And the book said, be ready. One, two, three, boom, he's here. Who got left? One, two, three, boom, he's here. Who got left? Who's sitting in this room right now? You ain't ready. He said, be ready, but you're sitting here because you think you got time. And he said, don't never make no decision about tomorrow because tomorrow's not promised. Can you get saved today? Yes, you can. Will you get saved today? I don't know. <laughs> You're embarrassed at the courthouse, but why would you not get embarrassed enough at home in private to ask God to help you? Tell the inmates, put by your own handcuffs when you come home. By your own handcuffs. Every inmate get out of prison ought to buy their own handcuffs, and when they get ready to fiend for something, cuff your own self up. Throw your keys across the room. Call for the, 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 the praying women and men in your church. So I was getting ready to go out and get high again. Y'all need to come on over here and pray for me. How I many know it's better for two or three folks in the church to come and pray for you in private than for the whole town to know you, you was feeming? Every single person in here, uh, I'm hot for my boyfriend again and I'm hot for my girlfriend again. But it's better to have your own handcuffs and, and lock your own self up and call for some prayer team to come over and pray before you go get AIDS tonight. Y'all quiet. Y'all, y'all. <laughs> oh, yeah, Pastor, that all sound good. Ain't nobody going to buy no handcuffs for themselves to lock themselves up. Now, they might buy some. Forgive me, Holy Spirit, because I was, I failed you like, don't you say. <laughs> I need prayer, too. <laughs> We're in the hour of temptation. The devil made me do it. <laughs> ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. Come on, let's get some more Bible. We got to go. Three and ten of Revelations. Revelation, last book in your Bible. Come on, real quick. Three and ten. Come on, somebody said the hour of temptation. Come on, somebody said, please, Holy Spirit, deliver me from that presence. Deliver me from every deceitful spirit. Deliver me from every, un look at this, look at this, three and ten. Y'all there? Because I have kept the word. Now, look at this. This is the Philadelphia church. This is the church everybody said they belong to. They are part of the Philadelphia church. The church of God, the church of love and harmony and all of that. <laughs> because and I'm not saying you're not in the right church I'm not saying that you're not saved but look at this 3 and 10 says because I have kept the word of my patience I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon how much of the world to try them that dwell upon the earth look at this now let's just marinate look at this this is people in church who the Lord says, I will keep you in the hour of temptation. Because when this demon comes, he's not going around the church, he's coming to church too. He's coming for the church folks too. He said he's coming on all the world. And when he come on all the world, his purpose is to try you. And to see if you're really a man of God. Really see if you're a woman of God. 
See, too many of us saying we are men of God and women of God, but how, how much of a man of God or a woman of God will you be when you will find yourself at the place of your temptation? What is it that the devil can come by your house with that will cause you to think twice about your salvation? There's nobody in here that the scripture says this is excluding. This is including every. Did he say the whole world? Did he say this spirit is coming on the whole world? Is he talking to the people in church? He's talking to everybody here this morning who say, I don't want to hear this. I'm already saved. Well, that means he's definitely coming for you too. Because who does he want to steal away salvation from more than anybody but those that name the name of Christ? <laughs> he's coming for you. He's coming for me. And so what is he telling us today? We better be ready. We better be prayed up. I don't care about you don't want to come to church. If you don't want to go to hell, you better get here. Because he told you don't forsake the assembling of yourself together with other believers. So everybody that comes in here on Sunday, look at them as a victim just like you. The devil messing with them too. The devil after their marriage too. They after their children too. He's after their finances too. He's after whatever they have to try to get them to go back to sin. He know her weakness and his weakness. You ain't got to look at them because you ought to be worrying about your weakness. <laughs> what can he get you with? That's what you need to be praying about. How many want a healthy body? Then that means you got to go to gym. Hello? You got to work. You got to exercise. You got to back away from the plate. Don't do you any good to talk about how physical uh, in shape so-and-so is. They sure look good. That ain't going to help you one bit. You can watch all the typo on TV, all you. To your arms ache. Till you break a sweat. Hey, Amen. Talk about who come to the prayer meeting when you coming. Talking about who coming to Bible study. When you coming? When you worried about your soul? When are you worried about slipping into hell? And don't even realize it. You ain't even aware of the devil right now plotting right now. He at the drawing board. And if you don't believe that, just keep on living loose. Keep on living without spiritual discernment. How I many you know the Holy Ghost is the giver of the discernment to let you know where you should go, when you should go, what you should do, and how you should do it? <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Again, I, I, I'm, I'm feeling good up here. I'm preaching, man. I'm swinging, boy. I'm just, oh, I'm just, I'm in the clouds, and I know that this ain't the kind of message that make people shout. But I'm praying that if somebody in this room would change their decision that they came in here with this morning. It's worth all of the stares and the glares. It's worth all of the, the comments that may come later. If just one person in this room decide to put their faith in God. Just one of you today would change today. Go ahead and bite the bullet on I can't have my flesh satisfied no more because I either going to satisfy my flesh or I'm going to satisfy God. It can't be both ways. The preacher preached that eulogy yesterday. You can't serve two masters. You can serve God or you can serve mammon. You can serve God or you can serve money. But you can't serve both of them. You can't serve two masters. Amen. Come on, church. Okay, let's go a little further. 24 and 21 of Matthews. 24 and 21. Matthews. The hour of temptation is on us. Is it going on? Is it everywhere? How many of us are right now as parents and grandparents afraid to let our children out of our sight? And I mean everywhere they go, we got to be concerned. When they go to school, we got to pray there ain't no pedophile teachers. When they go to church, we got to pray there ain't no pedophile preachers. When they go to the grocery store, we got to pray there ain't no pedophile folks in the store. Got to pray every time they go to the playground. Ain't no pedophiles hanging around the playground. We live in an hour of temptation where people are throwing away their whole lives for sexual perversion. They're losing everything because they can't keep their hands off of children. What hour are we living in? Everything. 
they own, everything that they love, their whole legacy, it goes down in shame and disgrace. The hour of temptation. Come on here. Come on here. The enemy is coming after us in such a way that you don't need to play with him because he ain't playing with you. I don't care. I don't care. This ain't no hallelujah message. I'm concerned about souls. I don't want you to stand on judgment day and say, Lord, if I had known better. No, you know better this morning. When you leave here, you ain't going to leave here saying, I don't know what I need to do. You got to decide if you're going to do it or not. That's the only question there is, am I going to do it or not? And I know some of you say, yeah, I am going to do it, but not today. Well, you are gambling that you're going to have it tomorrow. I just said that three or four times in the message. Somebody's gambling for tomorrow. You, you don't even need me to preach to you about it. You already know it's sin. You don't even need nobody to tell you that that's sin, but you're gambling on it tomorrow. You, you don't need nobody to tell you that's wrong. You already know it's wrong, but you're gambling on it tomorrow. I found no place in the Bible that says, and God said, when you get to hell, he'll forgive you. When you get to hell, it's forever. I got to hurry up. But do you know what it is that God's timing is not our timing? And when it says the hour of temptation, it's not, one, it's not like one hour. Because time don't have no reference in God's time. It's forever. One day is 1,000 years, and 1,000 years is like one day. So don't figure on how much time you got. All you know is when God says the time is up, it's up. So don't try to figure when God says enough time. Because you got time right now. How many know it? nobody has to leave here not saved today? And nobody has to leave here today without rededicating their life, their life to Christ. Nobody. If you can hear my voice and you're old enough to comprehend this message, you can be delivered today. Will you be able to say to God on judgment day, uh, Pastor, I didn't have enough time. I mean, Father, I didn't have enough time. He's going to say, yeah, you was at New Life Church of Faith on uh, February the 19th. What? Oh, yeah, God keep good records. How I many know he said he's going to bring it up? He said, I'll bring everything back to your remembrance. I got angels that record. They don't miss nothing. They record everything. He said, every idle word I'm going to ask you about. Why did you say that? I don't want to uh, forget about it because too many folks think they're hiding uh, in church a lot of times and they still try to cause discord and division in church. Just because you ain't out there in the streets drinking and drugging and smoking, you can be right now going to hell because you cause discord in the church. You're a gossiper in the church. you trying to run around and cause division in the church. God already know if you're here right now and you don't like somebody in this church. He already know that. And you absolutely can change the day and put away grudging and, and getting even with folks if you want to. I guarantee you if you were standing in the flames of hell, you would say, I forgive her. I let it go. Did you see the, the little play last week? Everybody in hell was repenting. They was all talking about, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's hot in here. You can do that right now. You, you can let go of any grudge with anybody in this church right now. You can let grudge and go with your mama, your daddy, your husband, your wife, white folks, black folks, Hispanics, Asians, rich folks. I don't care who you're grudging with. You can let it go right now. How many agree you can let it go right now if you want to? You can let it go right now if you want to. The hour of temptation sets it so that you're more convinced about getting even than you are forgiving. You'd rather hold something over somebody's head than to give them a pass. You want a pass? You ought to give a pass. Anybody want a pass? I want a pass. So I'm going to give you a pass. I ain't going to run you down to nobody else in this church or in this town or in this world. Uh-oh. See how that didn't go over? Who going to hell for gossip? He said, who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Those that backbite not with their tongue. You mean to tell me God gonna send me to hell for being a backbiter? That's what he said. This is this is this is this is real good. I gotta move on. But a lot of us actually think we can tell God what to send folks to hell for. That that, that ain't nothing that nobody need to go to hell for. That's usually what you're doing. Only stuff you don't want God to send folks to hell for is the stuff you're doing. Y'all heard about the old lady, didn't you, sitting on the front row, and uh, the preacher was preaching on adultery. She said, preach! And she, he was preaching on liars. She said, preach! And then he went to preaching on duff, uh, snuff dippers, and she said, wait a minute. 
He didn't stop preaching and went to men. How many know we love good preaching when it ain't coming down our street? I love my pastor until he preached on my devil. You need to come here every week and let me just whoop your butt with the word. You need to come in every Sunday and get ready for your whooping. It's better for this Bible to be preached to you now than for you to spend eternity in hell. Am I right? I find inmates following every rule in the prison, but they couldn't follow none on the streets. Oh, yeah, they could have. They said, I ain't got to. There's a place where they put you. You'll do what they say. Or they'll beat you some more. Or they'll lock you up in jail, in jail. They got some folks that's in, in consolatory confinement, and they said, now we need you to put your hands inside, outside the, the little hole, and so we can cuff you. I ain't going to do it. Then they spray something in there. <laughs> so they have to burn your eyeballs out, you stupid. You going to cuff up. Somebody said, you are going to bow. I don't know what kind of whooping you're going to have to take to bow, but you ought to be smart enough to go ahead and bow. Come on, mommies and daddies. Don't touch the stove, little junior. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, you're right. Don't burn me. Don't burn me. Don't burn me. How many know we steady telling our children what's right and what's wrong? And they want to get burned so they can say, you're right. You're right, mommy and daddy. I don't like jail. Them labor pains, I didn't even like that because my neck turned around. I spit out green stuff. I didn't know what was. That little old Barbie doll you bought me, I throw it over in the corner, but that one I brought home is up all night. <laughs> I like my slags and I like my hair turned around back. Now they always trying to tell me, hold a baby. What am I going to do with it? What do you want me to do with it? Rock it. Oh, I don't know what to do with it. Rock it. Rock it. Hello, mama. This baby crying. And if you're a good mama, you'll hang up. Click. And they call back. This number is no longer taking any calls. Come on. Try to use a little humor because y'all too serious this morning. Because when you're talking about real stuff, we can't wiggle out of that. When you're ministering about temptation, people can't wiggle away from that. Because everybody in here got to deal with your own demon. Everybody. Ain't nobody in here could be looking around talking about her or him. You need to be checking your own list of where the devil coming by your house. Because he coming by your house just like he comes by my house. Try my best to be a good husband, a good preacher, and all that. The devil don't care. Here he come, messing with me. Come on, do this, Pastor Miller. I'm not doing that. You know you like it. You're right, I like it. I ain't doing that. He come by and see me. He don't like you. He wants you to go to hell with him. He wants company in hell. Hell wasn't made for you and me. It was made for the devil and the fallen angels. Okay, I got to get out of here. Where did I stop? Matthew 24? 24, 21? 24, 21. Let me find it. I know it's in here. I can read it off the big screen. but I'm going to play like I know what my Bible says. Let's see. 24, 21, y'all there? For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor, nor ever shall be. And exalt these days, and except these days shall be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, these days shall be shortened. There's a time coming, I'm telling y'all, and I believe we're in a time of great temptation. It's everywhere you look. I mean, oh, one tragedy after another tragedy. 
As much as we were crying about Don Cornelius, now we're crying about Whitney. Just what has it been less than two years we're crying about Michael? One right after another. Then I don't know how many funerals we didn't host it in this church. One right after another. And they all haven't been older people. We have to deal with some tragedies right in this city. Come on. It's praying time. How many believe it? How many believe it's time to set your houses in order? I know, I know right now, this ain't no hot message. But boy, if Jesus was to come today, you'd be like, that little old shot tight. Hey, glory to God. I'm glad, I'm glad I got saved. I'm glad I got delivered. Come on here. 26 and 41. These are the last two. I got two. 26, 41. We're about ready to let you go. 26 and 41. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The, the what? The spirit indeed, somebody say indeed, indeed, is willing. So absolutely, the spirit 100% is willing to do what God tells it to do. Your spirit man is in a total agreement with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. But look at this other part. He said, the spirit indeed is willing, but what? But the flesh is weak. Come on, somebody, say, please, Holy Spirit, help me not to give in to my flesh. Please, Holy Spirit, help me not to yield to my flesh. Your spirit ain't crying out for fornication or drugs or alcohol or, or, or lying or cheating. It's your flesh. Do y'all know what? The number one killer in America right now is tobacco. The number one killer in America is tobacco. They did not make it so that we don't have to inhale smoke in public places anymore because they care about us. They got tired of paying the bills for all of the folks who were also suffering from secondhand smoke. Cancer. Yes, you can enjoy in your flesh. I was a smoker 30 years ago, and I mean it when you got a nicotine Jones, you want to smoke before you eat. And you want to smoke after you eat. Because you hooked on nicotine. It's Thanksgiving and you can't enjoy Thanksgiving dinner because you're ready to smoke. And so for 30 years or 40 years, you can smoke cigarettes. But I tell you that statistics have proved it out that when you smoke for 30 to 40 years, get ready for the cancer. Get ready for the emphysema. Get ready for the heart failure. Get ready for all of these other diseases that are directly caused by the smoking. Oh, no, it ain't popular preaching because preachers still smoke some of them. It ain't popular because a lot of church folks still go to church and smoke. I ain't concerned about you being accepted by your church or your denomination. I'm concerned about you not dying and going to hell. I go in and out of the hospitals, in and out of the nursing homes, and they're suffering because of nicotine addiction. Now look how quiet it is. How I many you know? <laughs> Whitney never should have tried drugs. How I many you know the, the flesh that Whitney had, she never should have tried? Because you could see it in her eyes. I'm out of control. Some folks try to blame her mama, other folks. Do you know the only way you could have saved Whitney Houston? You would have had to lock her up. She was not capable of controlling her flesh. Some folks know what it is to theme after stuff. And, and nobody starts out being a junkie. You always start out hitting it a little bit. You don't never start out being an alcoholic. You start out just sipping a little bit. You don't never start out being addicted to cigarettes. You just have to puff a couple of them. And all of a sudden, I want another one. And all of a sudden, I'm buying a whole carton. Now, I ain't even going to share them because I'm addicted. Matter of fact, it's sub-zero and their job won't let me smoke inside no more, so...
Come on. Somebody said, don't play with your flesh. Come on, every parent here said, Jesus, keep my child from fornication. Please, Father, help my child never to open their flesh up. Woo! Don't play with it. You better do everything you can to protect your child against themselves. They can be mad, throw their old lip out, slap it back up on their face. Say, listen, I ain't created no street walkers here. I don't care. I messed up, but I'm going to try to help save you. Let me tell you about yourself because I can tell you because you my seed. You can't be trusted. No, mama. No, you can't. Shut up. You just like me. Sit down. Let me talk to you, son. Sit down right here. Let me tell you something. Boom! Daddy, why you hit me? Because I'm going to hit you right now. Let you know I'm going to keep hitting you if, you if I catch you out there anywhere. Daddy, I'm going to prom. I'm going to prom too. I ain't going to stop you from going to prom, but look for me. I'll be in the bleachers. <laughs> Get in the limousine. I'm driving that bad boy. Toot, toot. Get on in. Get to the party. I'm DJ. <laughs> Say, my daddy is crazy. My mama's crazy. They waiting tables. How y'all doing? <laughs> what you? <laughs> Everywhere I look up, there they are. They are like they don't trust me. No, I don't. You know why? Because you my seed. Your flesh is my flesh. Come on! How many of us got out there and wanted to get back, but we couldn't get back till we cried out to Jesus? And if we could have, come on, get on your feet. I'm going to let y'all go. If, if, if we could have got to Jesus sooner, if we not got to him, if we had gave up sooner, how many know Jesus never passing nobody by? Nobody this morning that will say Jesus and he'll pass you by. The only people that are getting passed by are folks who don't want to give up their flesh. The Bible said when a man ceases from sin, his flesh suffers. When you quit sinning, your flesh will be suffering. There is no antidote but Jesus. Somebody said, but Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. First John, don't turn, but they got it on the screen maybe. First John. I didn't give it to you. You didn't put it up. Anyway, I'm going to read it. I got it here. First John 2 and 16. First John 2 and 16, it says, And we have known and believed. Oh, that ain't the one I want. Here we go. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And I'm going to tell you what I find the biggest demon in church once people get their flesh under some kind of control and even get their lust under control, they have an arrogant, proud demon. I find the most arrogant people in the world go to church. And they have the audacity to be judgmental and self-righteous. And you remember there was a woman in hell in that, that play because she was self-righteous. God hates a proud spirit. When any of y'all feel good or thinking about you, you the bomb, you need to break yourself. You, you need to hurry up and get down low as you can get before the Holy Ghost cuts your head off. Don't you ever walk around here and think you better than anybody in this church just because you didn't stop doing some stuff. You still on your way to hell unless grace saved you. From this man all the way to all of you in this church, we are none of us going to heaven because we right. We're going to heaven because of the grace of God. That's why we don't have no special seats because ain't nobody in here special. Everybody is a sinner saved by grace. 
Nobody in here because you didn't stop shacking or smoking or doping. You ain't got nothing coming. You better humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and say, Lord, help me that I don't go to hell for being a proud spirit. Proud spirit makes you hold grudges because you think you better than the person you holding the grudge with. You arrogantly think you ain't got to speak to people because you think you better than they are. Yeah, you can sing. Yeah, you can preach. But you're going to hell because of a proud spirit. Yeah, you pay your tithes. Yeah, you got a house and a degree. But a proud spirit is not of the Father. The only demon that the church folks need to work on is the proud demon. You run around here looking at somebody because you know they sin. Tell them about your sin while you're talking about theirs. You ain't going to talk about yours, are you? Everybody in this room, starting with me, comes short of the glory. Even after the blood of Jesus covers us, we are not going to heaven because of, oh my God, we are right. We're going because his blood covering us. No, you ain't. No, you ain't going to the club no more. But there's some stuff in your life right now that'll send you to hell. I ain't talking to her because what? You think you better than she is? I ain't shaking his hand. I remember some stuff on here. Oh, the devil remembers some stuff. Sister Miller, would you come, please? The hour of temptation is on us. It's on us. I need y'all to quit trying to do my job around here. Because I decide that I believe I'm within the grace of God to give some grace in this church, then you need to just back up. Because the same grace I'm giving out, I'm giving it to you too. I could bust your bubble every week. I see you, but I don't. I'm leaving this church because he got respect of person. They'll start with you. Look how quiet it's getting. All the self-righteous people hurt now. I'm, I'm... No, no, no. I'm just trying to make some points on some stuff. You need to get delivered from a proud spirit. Come on, everybody. Say, Lord, help me. You've been listening to the New Life Church of Faith. We're in Danville. We're at the Heavenly Square Mall, 11 o'clock Sunday mornings, Champaign, Urbana, 201 Lincoln Square, 8 a.m. Sunday mornings. Whosoever will, let them come. All right. God bless you. Don't leave. Please stay. Remain standing. Come on, praise team. Sing a little something today. Come on. Ministers, come on, join. Help me here. We're going to pray around this altar for anybody. It's only 1 o'clock, 2 or 3 minutes after. Please don't leave. Unless you have an emergency, just stay.